Hello good people of Open Arts. In today's video, I'm going to show you five ways to use chat to edit and a few bonus tips for you. Let's dive right into it and get started. Now if you're on the home page, you can access chat to edit either here or here or within the create image page. We're going to go ahead and click this. And you'll also notice at the top, we now have a select area feature. I like to think of this as sort of like regional guidance. I'm not sure if you've heard that term before, but if I click select, this will enable us to specify an area. You don't necessarily have to fill it in. And in the prompt, I'm just going to put something like place a blue J head logo and just generate. Now you might be thinking, why wouldn't I just prompt it? You could. But just like anything else, whether you're prompting using image guidance or whatever the case may be, all these features are assisting you to condition the image you want. So we're actually directing specifically in this area, put that logo there. And as you can see, we have a Toronto Blue Jays baseball logo on his shirt. And I just realized they're not even watching the baseball field, whatever. Now, if I wanted to put a baseball cap on him as well, Again, I can make a selection and prompt for a baseball cap and that's it. I don't have to put place a baseball cap to the boy on the right. So it's sort of like a shortcut without having to be so descriptive in your prompts or even if you have a very complex prompt and you want to isolate an area and it actually put the logo on the hat. That's a nice bonus. Another way we can use chat to edit as shown in the previous video is to change the style of say a photo that you have. This is a photo of me and my son when he was quite young. This is one of my favorite photos just because of my son's expression. And you can simply just go to the character lab here and let's say we apply Ghibli style. It's as simple as that. And as a result, we've Ghiblified the image. However, I want to take this a step further. The image you see on the screen is something I generated with one of the Flux models. One of the limitations of Flux is that in terms of artistic styles, it's somewhat limited, but it tends to lead towards more photorealistic, even 3D type of images. So I ended up creating a custom prompt as you see here on the left. And I'm going to show you how I got that in a second. And the style is more like a 2D storybook style. One of the great things about chat to edit is that you can use it to come up with your own styles with the assistance of an LLM, which really helps a lot. Taking a look at the generated image, you see it has that 2D storybook look. We flip between the two very, very different styles. I'm not going to go too in depth about this process. I'm going to leave this chat GPT prompt that you can use for GPT, Claude, whichever LLM you want to use. But basically what you do is you upload an image of the style that you want to mimic. In this case, I use a screenshot from one of the films from the recent MIT hackathon. I really love the storybook style. And within this long prompt, you're basically asking it to mimic the style. And it's going to give you all these descriptions, very detailed information. And I do this because sometimes I'll use this for individual prompts. But towards the end, you're going to get a complete image description, 100 to 200 words. You'll have to adjust this to 800 characters in the prompt, in the main prompt that is. And it's going to describe the style to you. Now you may have to take out certain words like here you have yellow crescent moon, whimsical rooftops. So you'll have to remove those things, but still keep the style. In fact, you can actually ask ChatGPT to do that for you. So that's basically how I came up with this prompt. I just had a thought. It'd be nice if we could save our own character lab presets. That would be cool. Now, as a bonus tip, we can actually use the same prompt and go back to something like Flux Dev, Pixel Wave, whatever the case. And now we have a different 2D style with a different model using the same prompt. So put that one under the belt and thank me later. The third thing I want to show you is how to utilize chat to edit to add text. Now, I started with this Spartan Gladiator image. And with some direction in the prompt, I was able to get this comic style cover using chat to edit. 
Now, once again, I use the same technique of coming up with a new style that was based off American comic and the GTA style that's already in the character lab, but I gave it a little bit more style with the help of ChatGPT. And within the prompt, I added the aspect ratio, 3 by 4 bold 3D text that says Spartans in yellow, and I even directed it, place it on the top center. Then the smaller font underneath, right under the title that says May 2025 edition, and then the caption that says, this is Sparta. This is Sparta! Obviously based on the movie 300, and then a square scannable QR code shaped as a shield in two by three aspect ratio. So we have the bold 3D text here, May 2025 edition, caption, this is Sparta, and the QR code. I then tweaked the style to kind of mute the colors a little bit just for a different look and came up with this. The fourth way to use chat to edit is to create simple mini comic strips. As you see in this example, I've got my two characters in a simple four frame mini comic. And before I show you the prompt, it was actually pretty easy to do because you could import characters directly in the interface. So if we go to the plus button here, you see we have upload history and character. Let me zoom in a bit here. So if I click on character, you see all my trained characters I have pop up here. So I'm going to choose Lila. Once again, don't worry, all these prompts will be on a Google Doc for you or maybe a Notion Doc. And the first part here, you see it just says place these characters in a four frame comic strip. Frame one, they are drinking smoothies in a cafe. To get the speech bubble, I actually put in, in the speech bubble, she says, this tastes gross, so on and so forth. So I did that for each frame, being very specific what's being said and a short description of what's happening within the comic strip. The trick is you have to do this within 800 characters. So it does have its limitations. What you could probably do is just do a one or two framed comic strip and put them together later, just so you can utilize those 800 characters. But just know it's not perfect. It might take a couple of rerolls. In my case, this was like one of the first generations where she was supposed to be saying this tastes gross, but the speech bubble is pointing towards the boy. Otherwise, everything else was pretty spot on. The last tip I have for you is sort of two tips in one, but uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot of the viral video memes all over the internet where people are using AI of their pets. And one of the things you can do is bring your pet's image and make them into a character. By the way, this is Milo, our little one. Well, he's not so little anymore. He's nine years old, but you can see he's got an underbite and his tongue's always hanging out. And initially I had him converted to be wearing a blue hoodie and ripped jeans and stuff. I did a YouTube short of him breakdancing, but I ended up not anthropomorphing him so that he could look more like a dog. And the prompt wasn't too complex. I just mentioned make him wear a hoodie. He's standing in an alley in a b-boy pose with his arm crossed and at a 9 by 16 aspect ratio. Now I did say this was a two-parter, so technically this is six tips. But anyway, you can get a character that you've created and make them photorealistic. If we look at the image here, I took this character, prompted for make it photorealistic, place him sitting on the subway, and it's my character in a photorealistic image. I did the same thing for my Lila character, and I even placed them together in a patio, having fun and eating a burger. Now, obviously, you can do this in reverse. In this example, I took the same Spartan comic cover and humanized them more to look more photorealistic. So as you can see, there's quite a few things you can do with chat to edit, and this is still in beta. Okay, there is one more thing that I haven't showed you yet. So whatever you do in chat to edit, you can also send them over to image to video and bring them to life. So let's say I wanted to take the anthropomorphic Milo here and send it to image to video. We are automatically directed to the video page. We can place our prompt here. And once the video is done, you can get something like this where he's breakdancing in the alley. 
Now, if you happen to be new to open art and this is all new for you, make sure to check out this video where I go over all the video settings that are available or check out this video where I go over this morphing technique. That's a cool little special effect. For now, my friends, let me know what you think in the comments below. Until that next video, happy creating.